So um, let me first um, introduce Elizabeth, because she's in 07. So um, Elizabeth, let me, um, let me uh, sit down. Okay. All right. And um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I'm just going to, gonna, uh, yeah, you want to do that? Um, would you like to use the microphone? Would you like to use the microphone? You know, that's probably a good idea. I have to tell you what's going on in my world today. Um, the moving truck show. Yes, they want to. <laughs> yes. So, of course, what a great day to, uh, to move. Um, my husband and I just got married in April. I was not planning on running for Congress this year. <laughs> Obviously, um, we have five kids together. And um, he proposed exactly on this day uh, in the morning uh, last year. And so we were getting ready. We, we were very, very upset about the election, of course. Um, but just a little background on me. I grew up in Michigan. I'm the 11th of 12 kids. So I've been, uh, and I have eight, eight brothers. So I've been fighting for human rights and civil rights <laughs> my whole life. Um, I'm definitely a fighter. And we need a fighter to get rid of Pat Mead. All the studies, all the reports coming in right now are really positive, not only for Democrats, but Democratic women. And I am one of those. Um, I'm a graduate of Western Michigan University. I studied political science, public policy, and women's studies. So I have a degree in each of those. And I think we need people in Washington who know how to make policy. One, um, this past weekend, we were in uh, New York City. And guess who I saw walking into the hotel uh, for Pennsylvania Society, but uh, none other but Pat Meehan. And it took every bone in my body, not, you know, just not to go up and choke him for the uh, tax uh, bill they just passed. Because what I see happening is all these representatives are bought and paid for by special interests. They go in there and they vote for the special interests and forget about you and I. And I'm just like you. I work every day. I have to put my kids through college. I provide health insurance for myself. I actually stepped down from a job um, in order to run for Congress because some of the people I work with thought, you know, there was a conflict. So I had to step down. And I'm a realtor. I'm a broker in Pennsylvania. And one of the things that I think I bring to this race is real estate is a backbone of the American economy. And one of the things I see happening in my business, I, I managed 50 agents. And they would come in and bring their contracts to me. And we, we would you know, make sure everything was going well legally. But when people got mad about real estate deals, you want to talk about emotion? I got to deal with the emotion and deal with the screaming and the yelling when things went wrong and try to find a solution. One of the things that really bothers me about Pat Mann is he runs from us. We are upset. We have absolutely every right to be upset for what is going on in our government right now. With Donald Trump and his whole group, we are getting cheated every single day from our health care, from the area that really makes me concerned is they're trying to get rid of the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which was set up to protect us from predatory lending. And they're trying to get rid of that because 2008 wasn't enough. Just to explain something about real estate is every time a property transfers in a community, the average uh, nationally is $64,000 pumps into the local economy. That's taxes, that's restaurants, that's moving trucks, that's title company, that's banks, that's clothing stores, all these different things that when somebody moves to a town, they need goods and services. So think about what happened in 2008 to all our municipal governments when they rely on that transfer tax and the, and the county government, and, the, and that money's not coming in. That killed our economy. And then what made it worse was we had municipal bonds, which people could invest in, which other people's uh, lives were affected. We, I saw people lose homes, retirements, things that they had worked hard for and saved for every day. Just go like this. Because of some, somebody else's greed. Somebody else had to be ahead of us. And that is what I feel like the message continues to come out of Washington. We're not important enough. And when you talk to these representatives, why did they vote on this bill? You know why they did it? 
It was all because they want to get reelected. And the people who paid for them to go there said, if you don't vote for this bill, you're out. That doesn't sound like representative government to me. That's not what this country was founded upon. And I think one of the advantages of having someone with my background is I actually know the foundations of the United States government. I actually know the history of the US and I don't think certain people are making a comeback because they're, they're dead. <laughs> Our president does not know his history. And I think he continues to put people in the position based upon who is, oh, I think you, based upon who is influential for him and his own self-interest rather than the interests of the American people. So enough about them, about me. Um, Vince and I have five kids. We're working on getting them through college. So I understand what it is to put a child through college and the expense of it. And to understand that it's getting more and more expensive and if this tax bill is allowed to go through, it hurts them even further. Um, I'm very committed in, in the community I, I live in. I live in Kennett Square now. We're moving to Chad's Ford. Vince and I have a uh, farm that is, uh, we have bog turtles that are preserved. There's a USDA easement on the property. We have sheep, we have chickens. We, we like to be connected to not only the earth, but to do cool things for the community, like our farm to table dinners, which raise money to conserve land. We help save a local orchard from going um, under the developer's hand. And a lot of people say, wow, that's weird that a realtor would fight developers because that's how I make my money. But sometimes you have to do the right thing and put money aside and realize that the betterment and the quality of life is more important than the money in your pocket. Yes, I have to feed my family, but I'm not going to sacrifice my principal to do so. Um, we started a group called Neighbors for Craybilly because Toll Brothers wants to come in and develop uh, a farm, put 300, over 300 homes on part of the battle, uh, the Brandywine battlefield. And we just did not think that was right. So people came up to us and said, hey, you guys have done other things and you've helped other people. We've uh, raised money to preserve the uh, headwater of the Brandywine River here in uh, Honey, Honeybrook, just south of here. Um, but people were saying, aren't you guys going to do something for Craybilly? Well, we started an LLC, and, and we had to start a civic action group because, you know, you're going to go up against the big, big groups. What we did is we're calling upon the township to do the right thing for the people. So, we're, so fighting for the people is something we have in our soul. It's time we get change in Washington. Guess how many women go to Washington from the state of Pennsylvania? Carry guess? Zero. Doesn't sound like representative government to me. And I don't think just because you're a woman you should be there. But a qualified woman? Yes, we need qualified women in Washington. And I am delighted to see so many candidates running this time. I think Emily's list, they had, uh, I'm trying to remember their numbers, but it was hundreds and now thousands of women are running. So I think that is a sign of the times. It's a sign that we have had enough and we need to start using our voice to be the, the, not only the advocates for our families and our communities, but for the things that we all value. Think about in the last year, the things that are coming under attack. Free press, health care, which I do not believe is something that should be reserved for the rich. I think that is a basic fundamental need for every human being. Why is it so difficult for this country to provide adequate health care. We put a man on the moon. We invented the superhighway, the internet superhighway. We can figure this out. Part of the problem is, look at their spreadsheet of who contributes to their campaign. Pat Meehan's top donors, insurance, big pharma. Is it any big surprise to you that Pennsylvania is sixth in the number of opioid-related deaths? It, it just, it, you do the math and you start looking at what they're doing and who's putting money in their pockets. I'm working in a grassroots campaign, meaning I call my friends and family and say, hey, can you help me get there? But I'm also running a smart campaign so that I don't have to be the one that makes the millions of dollars, because guess where the millions of dollars go when you're on TV? 
Well, you guys know that there's a lot of ways that we can raise awareness and not waste money, not waste people's money, and get some good representatives. And it's up to you guys to realize that those of us who don't have big dollar signs, <coughs> excuse me, behind our name, we may be the better candidate. Don't discount us. So I want to thank you for coming tonight. This group and the other indivisible groups, I think, are really making things happen. And if there's a silver lining to this whole Trump era, it's that we all are taking our democracy back. Thank you so much.